Hello there. Welcome to our general mathematics subject, lesson one, represents real life function. Before we will start the discussion, I want you to prepare a pen and a paper for you to be able to participate if there are questions and answers that you need to do in this video session. And you have to remember also that you can pause and you can play this video if you want to participate the tasks that might be needed for you to do. And of course, you can reward rewatch the video if you want to rewatch it for you to easily or for you to fully understand the lesson. All right. So May I ask first, pause this video and answer my question. Did you answer already the pre-assessment given from your Google Classroom? If not, go to your Google Classroom and answer first the pre-assessment task before you are going to continue this video lecture. All right, so I assume that if you continue this, then you're done answering that one. Lesson one, real life function. What do you need to know? First, define a function and piecewise function. Next, describe the graph of the function. And third, lastly, represent real life situations using functions including piecewise functions. This task was already posted in your Google Classroom and I ask you already to answer it in advance before you're going to proceed this video presentation. I assume that you're done answering this question. What real life situations do you think the photo wanted to relate about? You, you have to give at least two situations. If not, if you're not done yet, go to your Google Classroom and click picture analysis activity there and answer this question. All right, so if you're done, let's have this picture here. This picture represents how object or how an activity is done. For example, how a particular scenario is done. For example, your grades. The input is you need to exert effort to have a good grades. So what you're going to input, you have to be responsible, answer all the task on time and exert some effort in answering it, not copying with your other classmates' answer. And the process will be, I will be the one to check it. I will be the one to evaluate your answer. And then I will give you your grades. That would be your output, the grades. And many of the real-life scenarios also can be presented or can be presented with this picture. Like, like for example, ATM card. You are going to input, writing an amount that is input, counts money that is processing, then give you the amount lalabas sa ATM, that uh, ATM machine, that would be the output. Or another example, you are going to input in the calculator a particular number, then you add. That is the process there. And if you click the equal, you get the result or the output. Another example, your eyesight. When you see something that is input, but your brain process it, and we see it. That is your output. Pag sinabi, ah, I saw ball pen. That is already output. Last example would be lock and K. 
we first insert the K, that is the input, then turn the K, that is the process, and finally, the lock is opened, that is output. And I know for sure that you have also different situations that you've answered there in the activity posted in our Google Classroom. So many real life scenarios that we can um, give with this particular picture here. So let's continue. Do you know this picture? Some of you might answer yes. And maybe some of you also will answer, answer no. So that would be um, up to you. All right. Therefore, bakit po mayroong ganitong situation? Or may ganitong picture? Because function can be presented the same as vending machine. Yes, this picture is a vending machine. How does vending machine work? And why can we uh, say that it's the same with a function? For instance, we have here the codes. Ito yung mga codes na nandito. This one, the, the, these are codes that we can use to encode here in our vending machine to get a particular object that we want. For instance, we have A5. So here is A5. Encode it here, we can get an N5 mask. B7, that would be B7. Encode it here, we can get sanitizer. Then, if we have C3, we can get surgical gloves if we encode it here. Why is it a function? Because whatever you're going to encode here based on the given codes, the particular object will come out in that particular vending machine. Yes, that's the same with the function. If you have input, you will get a particular output. Kung ano yung Code na nandyan, you it put it para labas yung particular na gusto mo. Now, what about if you will have a presentation like this? Is it a function also? You have here code A5, A6, and C3. When you check A5 and A6, the same, you will get an identified mask. So therefore, the same, if you are going to encode it here, you will get particularly these codes with an N5 mask. And if you uh, encode C3, you will get surgical gloves. The question is, this still a function? Still the answer is yes. I will no longer uh, explain yet why it's a function because Later on, I'm going to define what is really a function. This time, I will just um, use the vending machine as an example for you to easily understand what is really a concept of a function. Another situation. I'm going to encode A5 here. I will get an F5 math. I will encode B7 twice. First, I encode B7, I will get sanitizer, correct. Second time, I'm going to encode B7 here, I will get surgical mask. Is this a surgical mask? The answer is no. Therefore, the question is, is still function puba? The answer is no. Back it. Kasi, the code here is saying you will get a sanitizer, but when you encode B7 here, you get surgical mask. Therefore, there's something wrong with this vending machine of yours. Maybe sira na siya, 
kasi when you encode particular uh, codes there, iba na pong lumabas. Therefore, it's not functioning well. All right? That is the same with function. Now, let's have first what are the, the, the terms that we need to know when we are going to have function. Firstly, we need to know what is relation. Relation is an ordered pair. Or shall we say, if you have input, you will have output. Kagaya ng picture analysis kanina na binigay. When you have input, you should have output. That is relation. Relation also can be presented through different illustration. We have, it could be ordered pair. Ordered pair, that would be your X and Y. X, the first coordinate, and Y is the second coordinate. But in function, we say X as domain, and we say Y as range. Now, Ibig sabihin, when we talk about function, we will use the domain and the range. Or we can also present a relation through diagram mapping. Or mapping diagram or diagram map mapping is the same. So if you have input, you will get output. So if you input A, you will get X, B, Y, C, Y, D, Z. You have input, you will have output. And also, we can also present a relation through table. If you will have X here, you will get output Y and so on and so forth. And also, you can present a relation through graph. But you will have a restriction in terms of graph because you will use the vertical line test. And I will first uh, give to you the definition of vertical line test before I'm going to present an example of a graph na function. All right? So now the question is, if relation ito lahat dito, ma'am, can we also present a function? Can we also present a function through these illustrations? The answer is yes. Pwede, pwede. All right? So, all you need to do is use this illustration for you to, to know if it's a function or just a relation. But what we, what makes a relation function. So ano ba ang dahilan na masasabi natin na ah, this is a function. First, we need to define what is function. Function is a relation in which each element of the domain or your input corresponds to exactly one element of the range. So that means you have X corresponds to Y. Isa to isa. And it is a set of ordered pairs. Ordered pair da siya. Dot no two ordered pairs the same X value. But different Y values. So hindi daw siya pwede na, for example, 2, 3 and 2, 4. Ibig sabihin, same ang kanyang domain, pero iba-iba ang kanyang range. Hindi daw pwede ang function ng ganun. Alright? Kailangan na iba-iba ang kanyang domain. Like that. 1 and 2, 2 and 4. Iba-iba ang domain, hindi pwedeng the same. Alright? So, let's proceed. We will have an illustration through ordered pair. Ordered pair. Ordered pairs. We have 
the column here function. May dalawa tayong example ng function. Una, titignan muna natin. Domain. These are the domains. 1, 2, 3, 4. And these are the range. 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, the focus is yung domain. Kasi yun po yung my restriction. See to it that your domain is not being repeated. Let's check. 1, 2, 3, 4. No numbers is being repeated. Therefore, this is a function. Another example. Let's check the domain. A, B, C, D. Let's check the range. 21, 22, 23, 21. Now, if we are going to check A, B, C, D as our domains, there is no letters there that is being repeated. Therefore, this is still a function. Mom, the range is being repeated. The range does not have restriction. Wala pong restriction ang range. Ang domain lang natin. Alright? So, that makes our Example a function. All right? So let's have here in the right column. What makes it not function? Kapag, kung titignan natin, if we're going to check the domains 3, 2, 3, 5, is there a number that is being repeated? The answer is yes. Yung 3, pangalawang basis na ulit. That's why that is not a function. How about the second example? Let's check the domain. A, C, B, and A. Dalawang beses na ulit yung A. Therefore, it's not a function. Alright? Let's have what about if it's being represented through table. The same manner, you will just check your X or your domain. Kapag may naulit dyan, automatically, it's not a function anymore. But if you're, if you're going to check here, wala pong na ulit na number. Therefore, that is function. Another example, A, B, C, D, walang na ulit, therefore a function. Because we will just check the domain or the X value. Alright? What makes it not function? If we are going to, why if when we check, there are values in x that is being repeated like 3 here dalawang beses na ulit like a here dalawang beses na ulit that therefore that those example here these example here it's not a function all right so what about if through diagram mapping diagram mapping or mapping diagram. Same manner. Kailangan po yung isang input, isa lang po ang kanyang output. Isa lang po. Isa, isa, isa. Therefore, this one also. Here is function. Ito rin ay function. Kasi lahat dito, isa. May isang output lang dito. Now, what makes it not function if ganito ang presentation like diagram map, mapping? For example, here, tingnan nyo yung 2. May dalawang value na range. That means 2 and 5, 2 and 6. Dalawang beses na ulit yung kanyang input. Another example, yung A dito, may dalawang range. A and 10 and A and 25. Input po dito, that means domain. Hindi pwedeng ulitin ang domain. Therefore, these examples are not a function. All right? Now, we will proceed about how about kapag graph. Unang-una, alamin muna natin kung ano yung vertical line test. Vertical line test is a graph represents a function if and only if no vertical line intersects the graph in two or more than one point. In short, 
kapag gumawa ka ng vertical line test ng inyong gra graph, once lang dapat mag-intersect sa graph. For example, I have here, first example, ito yung graph. If I'm going to create a vertical line test, this one, once lang po dapat mag-intersect. Dito lang na part. Once intersected, the blue graph, ito. Once lang po, when I created this vertical line test. That makes it function. But what about the example of not function? If I have here the graph, that this one, graph, then I'm going to create a vertical line test twice siya nag-intersect. Twice. Here and here. Therefore, it's not a function. So I have here illustrative examples. Lahat dito sa left column once lang ng touch sa kanyang graph. Therefore, these examples are function. But here in my right, we have here twice nagmeet, uh, twice na touch yung graph, twice din dito, dito thrice, dito twice. That means these are not a function. So those are four ways to identify whether the relation is a function or the relation is not a function. All right? I hope you understand. Always remember and do not forget this one. All functions are relations, but not all relations are functions. All right? Let's, let's continue. Do not forget that all functions are relations, but not all relations are functions. Ibig sabihin, hindi lahat ng relations are functions. Pero lahat ng functions ay relation. Ibig sabihin, for example, in real life scenario, Hindi ibig sabihin that you are boyfriend and girlfriend. Ibig sabihin yan ay mag-work yung relasyon ninyo. Sometimes, it will not work. That's why hindi aabot sa kasalan. That, that is one of a, an example of a real-life scenario. Alright? So, let's proceed here. Functional notation. How are we going to present a particular scenario using with a representation of functional notation. Let's have first this one. Y is equal to f of x. Ibig sabihin that y is a function of x. So we can use the y in, uh, in exchange to f of x. Like for example, y is equal to 3x plus 4. If we are going to use the function notation, papalitan yun natin y dyan ng f of x. That would become f of x is equal to 3x plus 4. Because in the previous slide, sinasabi doon na y is equal to f of x. Therefore, we can use either y or either f of x. They are still function, functional notation. All right? So, alamin muna natin kung ano yung piecewise function. Maraming ori ng function. Pero, isa dito yung piecewise function. At uunahin muna natin yung piecewise function. So, piecewise function is defined as multiple sub-functions. Where each sub-function applies to a certain interval. So, every function na ibigay, meron siyang equivalent interval. And piecewise function also called as compound function. Multiple. That is why compound function siya. Alright? Let's have an example here. 
for, for example, we have function 2x minus 2 with an interval of x less than or equal to 1. And we have another function 2ix squared minus 2x plus 1 with an interval of x greater than 1. So this is just an example of how to present or represent in a piecewise function. So ngayon, let's have the real life situations that involves function. And if dadaan natin through representation of functions and piecewise functions. Una, function, example muna ng function. Suppose a circular vacant lot in the backyard will re be planted with flowers. How much area will be planted with flowers if its radius is given? So the question is, how are we going to represent this one before we're going to solve a particular um, problem? So wala pa namang given dito na problem, ang tanong lang how much area. Now, this time, we need to just represent what is the formula that we are going to use or what fa function that we, are, we need to use. Now, let's have the solution. Let A be the area and R be the radius of the circular lot. Now, you have to recall that we're looking for the area. Therefore, remember what is the formula of the area. That is, area is equal to pi r squared. Now, this is how we are going to represent this kind of problem. So, we will go back to its formula because we are asked on how to represent a particular problem related this kind of situation. And that means what is the formula that you are going to use in order for you to solve a particular problem. That, mean, that is what representation means. All right. Now, another example. A regular employee in a company receives a 13th month pay during the month of December. The 13th month pay, represented as S, is calculated as 1 over 12 of his total basic salary denoted by X. So, si X dito yung total sa basic salary within the year. If the employee worked for one whole year, express his 13th month pay with S. So, S yung gagamitin natin in the month of December as a function of his monthly salary, X. So your solution should be like this. You let X, kasi denoted yung X dito as your basic salary. And then, ang one half, ito yung um, makukuha mo ng in, uh, na 13th month, one half of your basic salary. So how are you going to present that one? Kasi you are asked to express S as how to present that one using S. Now, you're going to do it like this. X times 1 over 12. 1 over 12, X is the basic salary. So let X be your basic salary. Or you can use it like this. Nauna yung 1 over 12. So this is 12, not 2. 1 over 12 times X. 1 over 12 times X. All right. It, it could be X times 1 over 12 or 1 over 12 times X like that. Another example. Ish can finish proofreading an unpublished book in two hours. If she maintains this rate, express the number of hours. Ish can proofread any number of unpublished book. First, I still have to let X be the number of unpublished book. So, two hours yung binigay ng pag-proofread. So, you have to express the number of hours with this. So, F of X or function is equal to two 
times x. Alright? So, if my equivalent na ng mga numbers dyan na kailangan mo is to solve, you can use this representation or this formula already. Another example. Glizel has invested in a jewelry making kit. She makes bracelets that she can sell for 7.50 pesos each. Your task is to write a function that shows how much gross income Glizel makes by selling X number of jewelries. Your solution is, of course, you start with letting X be the number of jewelry. And then you will have function is equal to 7.50 times x so that you will just substitute the number of jewelries and then multiply it with the amount equivalent per item all right so let's proceed how about representation of piecewise function let's have at least two examples first example a jeepney passenger pays 10 pesos for the first five kilometers as fare. So that is our first statement that we need to make a function. So 10 pesos for the first five kilometer, kilometers as a fare and additional one peso for every succeeding distance D in kilometers. So our function will be, of course, let D be the distance in kilometers. So, function of D. Function of D. First um, situation is per 10 pesos yung babayaran mo every first kilometer. Or, that means, for the first 5 kilometers, that means kasali na po doon kahit hindi umabot ng 5 kilometers. That means, D is if D is greater than 0, but less than or equal to 5 only. Ito yung interval mo for 10 pesos na babayaran mo as your pamasahe. Now, itong pangalawang equation naman or function ang gagamitin mo kapag yung distance mo is more than 5 kilometers already. So, if more than 5 kilometers na yung distance, you have to use this function 10 plus 1 kasi kas 1 additional for every succeeding distance. But you have to multiply D minus 5. Bakit? For example, yung distance na is 7 kilometers already. So 7 minus 5, that would give you 2. Therefore, 10 plus 1 times 2, and that is 1 times 2 is 2, then that would be 10 plus 2, 12 pesos na yung babayaran mo. That would depend on ilang sobra ba na kilometers dito. Alright? That is just how you're going to represent a uh, piecewise function. Okay? Gagawan mo lang po ng formula or function based on a particular scenario. Last example before we will proceed with your assessment. We have in Britannia Beach Resort, a banana boat ride cost 500 pesos intended for 15 passengers only. Additional passengers are charged 50 pesos per head. All right, per head. First is you let X be the number of passenger. And first, of course, kapag X dyan, dito is X din. So, function of X. You will, do not forget this ano, notation or symbol here because that would represent also your piecewise function. Now, may mga tendency din na ang piecewise function hindi lang dalawang function. Two or more functions combined. Right? Yung mga example ko dito, meron siyang dalawang functions lang. Pero may mga examples na three or five functions siya. So, it will depend upon the situation given, the problem given. So, we have here 500 pesos every, yung X natin is passenger, 
every, sorry, sorry. Kapag daw, 500 pesos ang babayaran per head kapag yung passenger ay more than zero but less than or equal to 15. So, ibig sabihin, from 1 to 15 per head is 500. Kapag naman more than 15 ang passenger, ang mababayaran mo ay dagdag 50 pesos sa excess ng 15 passenger. So, how are you going to represent that one? 500 plus 50 times X minus 15. For example, 16 passenger na. 16 minus 15, that is 1. So, 50 times 1. That would give you 50. Plus mo dito kayo 500. That would mean that sa 16 passenger, ang mababayaran mo ay... 550 pesos. That is just an example. This is just how to represent this particular problem. Now, ngayon, I know that you realize already na, ah, ginagamit pala itong piecewise function. Hindi mo lang alam na ginagamit yan. Most importantly, kapag may outing na mangyayari, may trips kayo, na may mga babayaran kayo, ito yung mga conditions of some particular resort, some um, fields na papasokan ninyo or even theater or whatever na may babayaran kayo. Ginagamit yung piecewise function, hindi nyo lang alam. Now, you already know that piecewise function really exists. And it's not just in here sa discussion natin, but in real life scenar scenario. All right, and I really do hope that you are going to um, put in your mind that we're not learning here uh, any concepts that is not used in real life scenario. Consider all the possibilities. Kahit saan kayo pupunta, may piecewise function. Like for the examples na binigay ko dito. All right, so... Important concept that you, you should remember, relations are rules that relate to values. Yung input at saka output. Pag may input, may output. That is relation. Functions are rules that relate only one value from the set of outputs to a value from the set of inputs. So kailangan... Pag may input ka, isa lang dapat yung kanyang output. Alright? You should remember that one. This time, please proceed to your Google Classroom and answer the post-assessment for lesson one. This is graded task. So, please use your... Um, please use the video that is being presented to you and... I'm so sorry for the noise in my back uh, the, my, in my background noise. All right. So I hope that you understand this lesson one. And before you will proceed, try to answer the post assessment for lesson one. And if you still have questions, if you want to rewatch the video, feel free to rewatch it. And if you have questions, queries, do not hesitate to contact me through. Google Google chat, all right? All right. Now, before you proceed to lesson two, you should finish all the activities related to lesson one. Thank you for watching, and I hope you understand something from this session. This is Mrs. Hamiro sharing you the good lessons. <laughs>